What's up, everybody? For the Winitachi, you know what it is, and thank you very much for tuning in to a brand new Pokemon Sun and Moon update video. It is August 1st of 2016. The Alola forms and Z moves have been revealed for Pokemon Sun and Moon, as well as a couple of new interesting Pokemon. So let's go ahead and get into the trailer, as we always do, and then we'll go ahead and go with an in-depth on each and every update. Certain Pokemon are thriving in Alola. Got Executor from the OGs. The OG one. Oh god, what the? A lot of grass drag dragon type. Whoa. All right, son. Got that ability of Frisk. Looks like a freaking weirdo though. Volpix and Nine Tails. Oh my gosh. Oh damn, they look cute. They gotta be fair. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, fairy type. Fairy type with Nine Tails only though, but it is a nice type of Volpix. That is very cool. I really like this one. The Executor. I like how it's dragging, but I don't really like it. The looks. But these two look very, very cute, and I really like that. Sand Shoe and Sand Slash. Definitely Ice Type. Up. Ice and Steel with the ability of Snow Cloak. Very cool. It's an interesting one. I don't get how there's so much ice in Alola. I thought it was a tropical island. Or tropical islands. But that's pretty cool. So those three, or the, well, those five Pokemon from the OGs got updates. We've got the Aurora... Ori Corio's unique styles. You got a fire flying, electric flying, psychic flying, and ghost flying type. There's four different types for the same exact bird. And they've all got a different dance style as well with them. That's pretty cool. That's pretty damn cool, son. These are the new bird Pokemons in the Alola region, and there is four different types. I'm assuming they all thrive on a different island. We got a fire, psychic, electric, and ghost type. That is copy everyone's dance moves. Oh no way! Dragon Dance, Quiver Dance, they get, they got the dancer ability, everything you do, they copy, and they probably, and they still get to attack, that is a really good ability right there. Got another Pokemon called Minyor, it's a rock flying, flying type, shields down ability, it looks like a goddamn ghost geodude type, what is, what is this, why is it, why does it got flying type, it's a rock, how do we fly on this thing, oh, oh well. It should just be rock type in my opinion. And then it shields down ability. It's got four different colors. Not sure if that means anything, but it's got four different damn colors. Oh, one of the OG Pokemons that we noticed from before, Gumshoes is a brand new evolution from that OG right there. Well, it's not an OG as in 151 OG, but it's an OG from the Alola beginnings. When we first got our taste of the new Pokemon, we've got Fomantis. It's a grass type with the ability of Leaf Garden. It evolves into... Lurantis, it's a grass type with leaf guard. Should be grass and fairy type if you ask me, but that is okay. It is a grass type. You want hate, and it looks very, very cool. Lurantis, it's got something to do with a, a, a praying mantis, I'm assuming, because that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Oh no! Oh, Mudbray looks like crap. Looks so bad. I thought it was just. I thought I wasn't gonna. I thought the Mudsdale wasn't going to have a evolution. Oh, well. Oh, call on the services of Riot Pokemon. Oh, you mind? No way. This is going to destroy HM moves, son. Oh, that is really cool. The Island Challenge, your rite of passage. Oh, so, okay. We got a, an interesting, cool feature into the game. We got Island Challenges, and we have to earn our rite of passage. We'll be going into details on that. Meet the Trial of Captains. We've got uh, one of them is Malo, which is grass type, Solana, which is water types. How many more do we got? How many more captains? We got Sofocles, which is an electric type, as well as Kiwawe, which is a fire type. So meet the trial of captains. So we get trial of champions, son. Powerful totem Pokemon await at the end of each trial. Is this one of the totems? You are challenged by totem gumshoe. So I'm assuming it's an OP gumshoe. Totem Gumshoes are off. Okay. So it's an OP Gumshoes. That makes sense. If it was just a regular Gumshoes, that wouldn't make sense. But okay. Oh, and they can call on help from their lesser evolved forms, I'm assuming. So that is very cool. So it's a 2v1 battle. Very cool. Clear each island's trials and battle the Ku Kowanas. And then we got Hala, the Kahuna of Malamala Island. This guy's the beast, man. Listen, so we've got, we've got to make our way. We've got travel. We've got a new gameplay, son. A new way to attack. Oh, no way. Dude, this is the longest freaking trailer of all time. It's got Z moves. Gigavolt Havoc. That's for electric types. I mean, Z move once per battle. So it's an OP to the OP move of all times. And you can only do it once per battle. 
and I believe, yep, a Z-move for every type. So the grass one's going to be Bloom Doom. There's going to be one for every type, like I just said. For the water types, it's going to be, what's it going to be? Come on. What's the water type? Oh, no, fire type's next. Inferno Overdrive. Oh, that looks really cool. So these moves just look goddamn beast, son. Wow, that explosion. And then the trainers do some little cool dance moves. Hydro Vortex for the water types. Oh, my gosh. Dude, these moves look so beast, man. Oh, wow, Z moves are looking sick. Cannot wait to see those. Let's go ahead and get into the complete details of what we just witnessed. Starting off with those Z moves that we just finished off with. It's a new element has been introduced into the Pokemon battles in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Z moves. Z moves are moves of great power that can only be used once per battle. When the trainer and Pokemon's wishes resonate with each other and both release their full power together, the result in an explosive force of Z move. All Pokemon can use Z moves to perform mightily in battle. Next up, we've got the key items for the Z moves. And what's very cool is, I'll tell you in a minute, uh, the Z ring fits into the trainer's arm, and Z crystals are set into it. If a Pokemon holds the same variety of the Z crystal, the two will be able to resonate with one another. For example, as you guys can see in the picture, it is an electric Z crystal. So if you have an electric type Pokemon, they'll be able to resonate with it and perform the powerful Z move. Crystals that correspond to each Pokemon type have been found in the Alola region. Next up, intense battles with Z-moves. There are two conditions for performing Z-moves. A Pokemon must learn a move of the same type as a Z-crystal, and it must be holding the corresponding Z-crystal. When you see these moves in action in the game, each overwhelmingly powerful move will be on full display, filling the entire screen. Next up, you'll notice that there's an experience the Z-ring for real on your own, and this is no joke. Tommy, International will be releasing a Z-Ring item for sale. Time to match up with the launch of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. When a player uses a Z-Move in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, his or her real-life Z-Ring will light up, vibrate, and play sounds to go along with the video and sounds in the game. That is very cool. With this new experience, players will feel the force of these overwhelming Z-Moves with even more realism. Please look forward to the details on the Z-Ring, and I am definitely going to be getting one! I cannot wait! Next up is those uh, the HM Destroyers, the land, the sea, the sky, with the power of Pokemon, you can go anywhere. Move forward with Poke Ride. One aspect of the culture of Alola region is something known as Poke Ride, in which certain Pokemon help people get to places they wouldn't be able to reach by using human strength alone. These Pokemon don't join your team, but you can call on them anytime. Oh man, this practice is typical of the way of the life of Alola. Where humans and Pokemon are so cl oh man, I thought these were gonna be like just given. Uh, oh well, I mean, I guess it's cool. I guess it's cool. Alolan, and now we're getting into the Pokemon. By the way, the Alolan Executor. It's a coconut Pokemon. It's got that Grass Dragon type now, height of 35, <laughs> and a weight of 916, and the ability of Frisk. The environment of the Alolan region. Can't even speak here. Where strong sunlight pours down into the all year round brought this about this strange in the executor's form. The people of Alola boast that the Alola executor is the true form of the executor, and that is not the case. It is just a goddamn hybrid. Unlike other executors, the Alolan executor has a fourth head on its tail. I did not even notice that. This fourth head controls the tail independently and can take on opponents to the rear that can't be reached by the main head's attack. This Pokemon excels in whipping its long neck like a lash to attack with a with its hard heads. But that neck can sometimes become a weakness and it definitely looks like a weakness and I really don't understand it because it is the ugliest Pokemon of all times. But getting into the cuteness here, alone Bullpix, Spot Pokemon, Ice Type 2, 21.8 pounds and snow cloak ability. It is said that Vulpix came to the Alola region together with humans, but the fox Pokemon moved to the snowy mountain peaks to avoid the normal habitats of other Pokemon, and thus it ended up taking on this form. These Alolan Vulpix live on high mountains that remain covered in snow year-round. They live in small packs of two to five individuals helping one another survive. Alolan Vulpix can freeze anything solid by expelling breath at a temperature of negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative 50 degrees 
Celsius from its mouth. It doesn't fare well in the heat, but when the temperature gets too high, it proceeds. It produces ice form its tail to lower the surrounding temperature. Okay, that is pretty damn cool. I love these Pokemon, and Nine Tails is very interesting as well. Alolan Nine Tails live on a snowy peak that is revered in the Alola region as a holy mountain. They all they are treated as sacred emissaries. And Pokemon meets with them, awe and fear. The Pokemon's personality is extremely gentle, and at times it has helped humans to seem who seem to be in distress. However, it shows no mercy at all to anyone or anything that dares to damage its territory. The Alolan Nine Tails is able to produce ice crystals from the fur of the cover of its body. It can use these ice crystals to block attacks, or it can form balls of ice with them, which which each of the fires bullets at opponents. The power of these ice missiles is great enough to pulverize rock. It's a fox Pokemon, and it's ice fairy type this time, with a 343.9 pounds and the ability of Snow Cloak as well. We've got the Alolan Sand Shrew. It's a mouse Pokemon, ice CO2, 88 pounds, with the ability of Snow Cloak. Sand Shrew have historically lived in desert areas, but with frequent eruption of nearby volcanoes, drove the Sand Shrew to abandon the desert and migrate to snowy mountains, where they took on this form, exactly the same way the Ninetales and Vulpix did. Sand Shrew's body changed to adapt to the harsh environment of the snowy mountains. The Alolan Sand Shrew has a shell of ice covering its skin, which is the hard seal. It excels defensively, but it lacks flexibility and can't curl its body into a ball like the ground type sand shrew can. Its heavy weight makes the Alolan sand shrew slower than a normal sand shrew, but the claws on its hands and feet make allow it to move across ice without slipping. Oh wow, that is dude, this is dude, I'm loving this. And um, basically when it wants to move quickly, it uses its stomach to slide across the ice uh, like a hurling rock. We've also got the Alolan Sand Slash, Mouse Pokemon Ice Steel, 3, 121 pounds, and Snow Cloak. Very similar to the Sand Shrew. The Alolan Sand Shrew, the Alolan Sand Shrew of the Snowy Mountains evolved into the Alolan Sand Slash with spiny, spiny backs that are covered in ice. Thanks to their icy coating, these spines are large and sharp. Alolan Sand Slash hide themselves in the snow when strong enemies appear, leaving only their needles exposed and ready for business. The weight and of the ice it covers its body makes these Alolan Sand Slash heavier than normal Sand Slash, and these cause them to be slower. Yet, in snow fields and on ice, they move by creating a path with their paws, with their claws, and their, so they're able to move with swiftness. The sprays of snow kicked up the Alolan Sand Slash's movements are so beautiful that the photographers head to the snowy mountains and the snowy peaks to capture the moment. However, Sand Slash live deep in the mountains and there is greater danger of becoming stranded, so it's forbidden to climb the mountains without permission. Next up, we've got four different types of the same Pokemon. The Oricorio. This is the Sensu style. It's a dancing Pokemon. This one is Ghost Flying, 2 7.5 pounds, and it's got the ability of Dancer. Oricorio changes its form by slipping the nectar of certain flowers. Since it has four different forms, the same as the number of islands in the Alola, it would seem that the different Oricorio live on each of the islands. I called that. The Sensu style Oricorio is quiet and collected by means of its dance. It gathers the spirits drifting about in an area and burrows, borrows their powers to fight. People who migrated from Kanto feel a great liking for this Pokemon because its dance reminds them of their homeland. Oricorio has the new dancer bird that no other Pokemon has had before, and it is amazing. If another Pokemon in the field uses a dance move, the Oricorio will be able to use the exact same move immediately afterwards thanks to the dancer ability. The next Oricorio is the Pau style. It is psychic and flying type, but the Pau style Oricorio acts as at its own pace, which sometimes makes it difficult to deal with. It sharpens its spirited moves through dance, which increases its psychic power. It's said that this dance expresses its gratitude as the guardian deity of Pokemon. Oricorio has the new dancer ability as well. Next up is the Pom Pom style of Oricorio. The Pom Pom style's Oricorio is very friendly towards people and it uses dancing to encourage trainers who are feeling gloom or glum. 
whatever that difference is. When it dances, its feathers are charged with static electricity, making this the electric flying type. It can attack with these charged feathers, and sometimes it unleashes a powerful electric shot. And this one also has the dancer ability as well. Lastly, we got the bale style. Got the dancer ability as well, and it is fire type. The bale style oricorio is very passionate, and power fills its body when it dances. It sends downy fluff flying during in its intense battles. By igniting the fluff, it can unleash a fiery dance attack. Next up, we got Mudbray, which is the de-evolution of, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of it. Mudsdale, there we go. It's a donkey Pokemon, it's ground type, 3, 242 pounds, and it's got the abilities of own tempo and stamina. Mudbray could once be found all over the world, but it is overhunted and ended up on the verge of extinction. It's said that the Alola region is the only place in the world where the Mudbray can still be found in the wild. Mudbray boasts superhuman strength. A surprise considering its small body, Mudbray can carry loads of up to 50 times its own weight on its back or dragging behind it. Mudbray loves playing in the mud. It's easy to live in harmony with this Pokemon as long as you provide an environment where it can play in the mud. If it can't frolic in the mire, however, Mudbray will become stressed and may stop listening to its orders. Next up, we got Minior, Meteor Pokemon. It's a rock and, for whatever reason, flying type. It's got a height of 1 and a weight of 88, but its abilities are shields down. Minior are found in the stratosphere and live by absorbing the detritus around them. When they've consumed a large quantity of particles, their bodies become heavy and they fall towards the planet's surface. Minior has a hard and heavy outer shell with a core inside it. The Meteor Pokemon seems to have made in such a way that if the shell breaks, it becomes lighter and can deal with and can deal out quick attacks. When its shell breaks, the core in its center is revealed. You won't know what color will appear until it happens. Minior has the new Shields Down ability, which no other Pokemon has had before. With the Shields Down ability, it can excellent defense capabilities as long as its shell is intact. It can all it will also be protected from status conditions, but when its HP drops below half, its shell will break and it will change to a form better suited to attacking. Now that is a very interesting ability right there. Next up we got gum shoes. We've gotten its uh, D evolution before in a previous video and we got a category of stake out Pokemon type is normal. 2 is the height, 31 is the weight, and its ability is stake out and strong jaw. Gumshoe's method of targeting prey is the exact opposite of Young Shoe's strategy. I mean, Young Goose. While Young Goose prowls around, Gumshoe's stakes out its prey usual routes and waits patiently for it to come by. Gumshoe's has a tenacious personality, which is why it targets one prey for so long without wavering. But when the sun goes down, it runs low on stamina, falling asleep right on the spot. Gumshoes can withstand a great deal of hunger. It's able to stay perfectly still while waiting for its prey, keeping watch without eating a thing. Next up, we've got two more Pokemon, and they're both the evolutions of each other. The first one is Fomantis. It's a sickle grass Pokemon, grass type, one, three pounds, and leaf guard. Fomantis is not is nocturnal and it performs photosynthesis while it sleeps during the day by spreading out its leaves in all directions. Because of the danger of staying in the same location two days in a row, Fomantis begins its search for the next day's spot as soon as the sun sets. For Fomantis, photosynthesis is not just a source of energy, it is a necessity to achieve the strength and brilliant coloration of its evolved form. Photosynthesis is precious to Fomantis and it will fiercely attack those who get in its way of that process. Fomantis excels in long-range attacks with like Razor Leaf and Solar Beam. Solar Beam is indeed a powerful move, but since it uh, uses up the energy that the Pokemon has stored through photosynthesis, Fomantis rarely uses it. And its evolved form is Lurantis. It's a Bloom Sickle Pokemon, grass type of two, height of 2, 40 pounds, and Leaf Guard. Lurantis draws opponents near to itself with its flower-like appearance and aroma and then it takes him down. It's said to be the most gorgeous of all grass-type Pokemon due to its brilliant coloration and elegant moves. Lorantis appears is main, appearance is maintained through detailed grooming. It will trust a trainer who does a job caring for it. 
but it will apparently have a difficult time growing closer to a lazy trainer. Lorantis can learn Solar Blade, a move that releases a blade-shaped beam to mince up its foes. The blade is also sharp. It is said it can slice a rock in half. Solar Blade is a move that no other Pokemon has been able to learn before. Well, Solar Blade Lorantis absorbs energy from the sun in its first move and then unleashes the powerful attack in its second move. Lorantis is a totem Pokemon of the lush jungle, the site of the Akala Island Trian Trial. It will overwhelm trial goers with the powerful combos it unleashes with the Pokemon allies it calls. So, Solar Blade is pretty much the brand new Solar Beam. Very interesting move there. Yolala is surrounded by the sea. It has a diverse ecology made up of Pokemon that have lived as natives in the Alola region for generations. Along with Pokemon that have more recently arrived in the Alola from other regions, in Alola humans and Pokemon coexist in a very close relationship and have culture as developed that is different from other regions. The Island Challenge, the brand new challenge. One aspect of the unique culture that is developed from the Alola region in the Island Challenge as an adventurous rite that involves traveling through each of the four islands. This event helps young people grow into one fine Pokemon trainer. As the main character of the Pokemon Sun and Moon, you yourself are destined to attempt this Island Challenge. Island Challenge Trials To complete the Island Challenge, young trial goers must overcome the trials in store on each of the four islands. These trials are not Limited to battling with Pokemon, they take a variety of forms such as finding items or completing quests and tests of knowledge. You will not be able to accomplish them with ordinary methods. The Totem Pokemon, at the end of each trial, a mighty Totem Pokemon known as a Totem Pokemon, will be awaiting. A Totem Pokemon is much larger than the others of its species, and its body is enveloped in a special aura. Sophisticated Combos in SOS Battles When Totem Pokemon battle, they summon Alley Pokemon to join them. With the support of these allies, the Totem Pokemon become even more powerful, and it seems that the Pokemon, other than the Totem someti uh, Pokemon, sometimes call on allies to aid them. Grand Trials The final trial on each island is called the Grand Trial. It is a Pokemon battle against the Kahuna who leads that island. If a trial goer succeeds in clearing this Grand Trial, he or she will be publicly recognized as having cleared uh, all of the island's trials and can move on to the next island. So you have to complete a trial in order to move on and carry on with your adventures. The Trial Captains. Each trial has a captain whose role is to provide guidance to trial goers. All the captains are trainers who undertook trials on their own island challenge a few years earlier. Lana is a captain who is an expert in water type Pokemon. She is dedicated to her family and is reliable older sister who watches over her younger sisters. Other captains. Captain Malo is an expert in grass type Pokemon. She loves cooking, but it seems that sometimes her taste is a bit particular. We got uh, specializing in electric type Pokemon, Captain Sophocles. He is good with mechanics and has invented various machines. Last but not least is Kiawe, is a captain whose expertise is in fire-type Pokemon. Together with his Marowak, he studies the traditional dances that have been passed down with the Alola region. Marowak is a ground-type, so we're not too sure what's going on there. And the Kahunas lead each island. Each of the Alola's four islands has a leader called the Island Kahuna, who governs the island. Kahunas are chosen by the Pokemon known as the Guardian Deities, which are also found on the island. Hala is the Kahuna of Melamele Island, where you will have moved to, and he is your rival Hau's grandfather. His skill is renowned in the Alola region. He gives you your first partner Pokemon and experts expects great things from you. I just want to say, this is the biggest update of all times with Pokemon Sun and Moon. Please check out my other Pokemon Sun and Moon updates on our Pokemon Updates playlist. Thank you very much for tuning in. Got any questions? Post down below in the comment section. Check out the description box down below as well. Giveaways galore down in the description box. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. For the point, Itachi is out.